Hey everybody, in this video we're going to create an audio player using Java. Let's get started. All right, let's get started everybody. Now in this following project, what I'm about to show you isn't compatible with MP3 files, but you could easily convert an MP3 file to a WAV file. You can do that online. Otherwise, to play an MP3 file, you'll need an external library or framework such as JavaFX. And I do have another video on that. If you need some sample of music, you can always use YouTube's audio library. These songs are free to use, as long as they're within the context of YouTube. You can search for songs, find one that you like, and download it. This is the song I picked. It's currently an MP3 file. I'll need to convert it to a WAV file. You can easily look up an MP3 to WAV converter. Select a file. Convert to WAV. Convert. Download. For convenience, I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'll delete the MP3 file. And we now have a WAV file. To make this even more convenient, I'll place this WAV file within my source folder so that I don't need to use an absolute file path. So we're ready to begin once we have a WAV file. We're going to create a string for our file path. You can use an absolute file path or a relative file path. Since this WAV file is right next to my main Java file, I can use a relative file path easily. We're going to copy the name of this file. We're going to copy path file name, and then paste it within the string. The song that I picked is a caring friend, and this is a WAV file. Be sure to include the extension too. Once we have our file path, we'll create a file object. But we have to pass in our file path as an argument to create a file object. File, file equals new file. Then within the constructor, we will pass in our file path to the file constructor. Then be sure to import this class for file. When handling files, it's considered dangerous code because accessing files can be unpredictable. We'll use a try and catch block. Try this dangerous code, catch any exceptions. One exception that we may run into is an IO exception. We'll give it a nickname of E. Then be sure to import this class. This catch statement will act as a safety net to catch any unexpected IO exceptions. Here we'll output something went wrong. It is better to handle specific kinds of exceptions first. We will do that momentarily. Within the try block, we will create an audio input stream object. That's the first step to playing audio. The type of this object is audio input stream. Let's name this object just audio stream equals. We will access the audio system class. We're accessing it statically. So we type the name of the class. Call the get audio. Let me zoom out a little. Get audio input stream method. And then we will pass in our file object. Be sure to import this class too. We'll be doing a lot of importing, so get used to it. Now with the get audio input stream method, we have to add a catch clause for any unsupported audio file exceptions. Well, we can write a catch block for that. Catch the following exception type, where the type is unsupported audio file exception. This is if somebody tries to use an audio file that's not supported, not one of the following. We will give this a nickname of E, import this class. Then we'll output the following. Audio file is not supported. Be sure to import the audio input stream class too. Now, when you open this audio stream, you do want to close it. So in modern Java, you can use try with resources. Add a set of parentheses after try. We will cut the snippet of code and paste it within the set of parentheses. Delete the semicolon. If you use try with resources, you'll automatically close this object when you're done with it. You don't need that finally clause. So now we're going to create a clip object. Clip clip equals access the audio system class 
we're doing it statically, call the get clip method. Import this class for clip. In simple terms, a clip is like a music or sound player. It allows you to load an audio file and then play, pause, stop, or reset the audio. So it gives you some controls. And we do need a catch clause for this too, for any line unavailable exceptions. So let's add that catch clause. In case we encounter a line unavailable exception, which we will nickname E, you might encounter this exception if another resource is trying to access that audio file, or if it's unplayable for some reason, it's unavailable. We could output something such as unable to access audio resource, then import this class as well. There we go. Once we have our clip, it gives us some controls, but we do have to use it to open the audio stream object. We will take our clip object, call the open method, and then pass in our audio stream object. The clip object, which is our player, is going to open our audio stream. Now we're not going to play it quite yet. Before we actually do play it, I'm going to add another catch clause. We're going to catch any file not found exceptions if we can't locate our audio file. File not found exception of E. We'll output could not locate file. Import this class too. So we have four catch blocks. The last one acts as a safety net. Now let's be sure that we can locate this file first. So temporarily, let's output no problems detected. I'm going to run this program. Could not locate file. If that's the case with our relative file path, we're going to access the source folder, then access that audio file. There it is, no problems detected. If this file is unsupported, let's say it's mp3, I'll bring back my mp3 file, move it to my source folder, then I'll switch this to mp3. Then we should get an unsupported audio file exception if that's the case. Yes, audio file is not supported, because we're trying to use an mp3 file. So let's switch that back to wave, or whatever yours was originally and delete our mp3 file. We were just testing it. All right, now we're actually going to play the clip. Now, one last thing that I'm going to add, it's optional, I'm going to add a finally block. Once we're done with this program, we can output the following. Let's just say bye. This will make sense in just a moment why I'm doing this. There's one problem we're going to encounter when we play our audio. Now to actually play the audio, we're going to take our clip object, Call the start method to start the audio. Here's what happens when I run this currently. The music may play for just a brief second. We print by, then exit the program right away. The issue that we're running into is that our program doesn't wait for the audio to finish. Once we start the clip, we immediately end the program. So we need some way to keep the clip open. And there's a bunch of different options. You could use threading within a while loop to check to see if the clip is still running, but I haven't taught that yet. So here's another option. We'll create a prompt for the user to play, stop, reset, or quit the audio program. The audio will continue playing unless the user decides to stop or quit the program. So we'll need a scanner to work with to accept user input. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Pass in system.in. Import this class. Now, if you open a scanner, you do want to close it when you're done with it. You can do that within the finally block like this, scanner.close. With modern Java, you can use try with resources, which will automatically close any resources. And we can do that with our scanner too. Let's cut our scanner, paste it within the try block. Now be sure to include the semicolon. Our scanner is going to automatically close when we're done with this program because we're using try with resources. 
you can use try with resources if an object implements the auto closable interface. Scanner and audio stream both do. Clip doesn't, so we'll keep that within the try block. Rather than start our clip, let's create a string variable of response. We'll create a while loop. While our response equals, let's say, capital Q. Now we want to say while our response doesn't equal capital Q. We'll use the not logical operator. And to make our while loop happy, we do have to initialize our response. We'll set that to be an empty string. So a user is going to type in a response. As long as it's not Q, meaning quit, we'll continue the program. Within the while loop, we'll give a user a few options. Let's output the following. Let's say P equals play. Let's copy this print line statement. S equals stop. R is to reset. And Q is to quit. Then we will ask a user to enter your choice. I'll use print rather than print line to keep the user input on the same line. We'll take our response, which is a string, set it equal to, use our scanner, get the next character by calling the next method. In case a user types in a lowercase character, we can make it uppercase by method chaining the to uppercase method. All right, we'll do a test run. And let's be sure that we start the clip, just temporarily, clip.start method. What's likely going to happen is that we'll start the audio clip and it won't stop until we press Q to quit. So here's the audio. Hopefully you can hear me. Once I press Q, the program's going to stop. It's because the program closes down and exits. Now we want to give the user a few options after they type in their response. We can use an enhanced switch for this. Let's also be sure that we delete the start method of our clip. We don't want the audio clip to start until the user presses P to play. We will create a switch. We will examine our response. Does our response match any cases? If our response matches a case of P, we'll write an arrow to do the following. Take our clip, then call the start method. If our response matches a case of S, that means stop. Take our clip object, call the stop method. If our response matches a case of R, do the following. Take our clip. To reset, you're going to call the set micro second position, then pass in zero. Do pay attention to the capitalization. S is lowercase. If our response matches a case of Q, take our clip, call the close method to close the clip. Then if there's no matching cases, let's output the following. System.out.println, invalid choice. All right, and that should be everything. Enter your choice. Just to be sure that the default case is working, I'm gonna type taco, invalid choice. We'll press P to play. S to stop. P to play again. R to reset. And Q to quit. All right, everybody, that is an audio player that you can write using Java.